Yeah, so thanks, Jack. Um, yeah, I work for Zoos Victoria as their native rodent biologist. So my work is now focused on um, conservation of Victoria's threatened rodent species, um, which I've been doing um, for many years now um, through my postgrad work. Um, and yeah, today I'll be talking to you about a couple of threatened species of rodents in the Otways and the survey work that we've been doing for them. But first, I'd just like to um, acknowledge that um, the work that I'm talking about today was conducted on the lands of the Gadabunud, um, Eastern Mara and Wadawurrung people. And I'm currently coming to you from the lands of the Bunurong people. And I'd just like to pay my respects to their elders past and present and um, to any um, traditional owners present today. Um, the work that I'm talking about today is part of massive group efforts um, from a bunch of different people. So there's the Zuzvik team. Um, this work is feeding into the Wild Otway Small Mammal Initiative um, led by Barbara Wilson. And so to hear talks from Barb, Mark and Darcy, you'll have to tune in next week um, for some cool, uh, more cool small mammal stuff. Um, the CEC has been integral to all the work I've done in the Otways over the years um, and um, particularly Mark and a bunch of um, well, an assortment of interns um, coming out and helping with camera work in the fields. And some of this work has been funded by PV and DELP. Um, so in the Otways, we've got a bunch of different rodent species. Um, anyone who's done any camera work or Elliot trapping work will have encountered bush rats. They're doing pretty well. Um, we've also got swamp rats, um, the Rakali or water rat, the Turana or the broad toothed rat, um, which is threatened, and I'll be talking a bit about today. Um, the Kunum or smoky mouse and the Pukula or New Holland mouse. These guys are both probably extinct from the Otways, but we're still trying to find them. And then we've got the introduced um, three as well. So first up, I'll uh, talk to you a bit about the Pukula or the New Holland mouse. We're moving towards um, or transitioning into using the Indigenous names for these species, as difficult as it is to settle into one name, but um, it's much more appropriate for this species than the name the New Holland mouse and a lot more appealing as well. Um, but these guys are a small little rodent. Um, they're about the same size as a house mouse, but much nicer. They don't smell bad and they've got big, beautiful eyes and giant ears and they're just um, a lot more pleasant to deal with. Um, they tend to be found in areas with like relatively sandy soils and like good floristic diversity. So places with nice coastal heath, um, but they can also be in um, other more inland habitats. And they've undergone massive declines in Victoria um, since the 1970s and probably much larger declines prior to then. Um, but we've lost them from about seven of 12 uh, historically occupied regions in Victoria. Um, and these guys are endangered in Victoria and vulnerable federally, but are currently being reassessed under the EPBC Act. Within the Otways, um, all of the records of this species are around Anglesey in that sort of Anglesey Heath area. And this all comes from amazing work, well, most of this comes from amazing work done by Barbara Wilson um, over the years. So unfortunately, um, New Holland mice haven't been seen in the wild here. Um, since about 2000 and in the early 2000s there was a trial reintroduction attempt um, but they didn't persist so we've continued searching for them but it's a long time since we've seen them in the Otways and they were found in this one really isolated little patch but likely had a much more broad distribution previously that would have connected them around to um, populations in the east as well. Um, Another species that we'll be talking about is the, that we're still looking for in the Otways is the Kroonroom or the Smoky Mouse. These guys are a bit chunkier and they're not doing as badly in Victoria, but they're doing worse um, on a national scale because that map is their entire uh, distribution in like on the planet. Um, and they've yeah been lost from coastal East Gippsland and likely lost from the Otways as well. And there have been some pretty significant declines in the Alps. So all the dark grey circles are records that are more than 20 years old and the blue ones are from the last 20 years. So we've seen some pretty significant declines despite a decent amount of survey effort across this area. 
And these guys have really weird habitat associations. You can find them in anything from coastal heath to subalpine heath, really wet forests, like the forests around, um, like beach forest, Turton Turton's Track, that kind of stuff, um, to dry sclerophyllous forests in the central highlands. So they should be much more broadly distributed than they are, but they're just really docile little guys who are probably extremely um, susceptible to predation and they also live in these like communal burrow systems so preying upon them um, is quite easy and you can make a massive impact on an entire population with just like one cat or fox honing in on a couple of burrow systems. Um, these are all of the records for the species from the Otways. They were actually originally just um, described from the Otways up around um, Turton's Pass in 1933. There's a couple of records from around Beach Forest in 37, although these um, records are not very accurately geo-referenced. And then there's a couple of records from the 80s down on the Cape, um, but nothing since. So to try and find these guys again and to see whether they really are completely extirpated from the Otways. Um, we've been doing some camera surveys over the year and we'll continue to do some more um, in the coming years. Um, both species are readily identified on camera traps. Um, for the Kunoons or the smoky mice, you need white flash cameras to be able to tell the difference between them and bush rats. Um, and I tend to use a much closer bait station setup than you'd traditionally use for potteroos or cats or anything like that. Um, so just under a metre between your bait station and your camera trap. Um, so this is what smoky mice look on, look like on camera traps. Um, so you can kind of imagine if it's in black and white, they look a lot like bush rats. Um, but in colour, you've got these beautiful bicoloured tails, like a really nice, like light grey coloration, distinct white bellies, and their body shape is just a bit weird like they look a little bit too fragile whereas bush rats look a lot more robust and not quite so like fluffy and soft um, and then new holland mice um, you can tell the difference between them and house mice um, quite readily on infrared or white flash um, they're a lot stockier they don't really have a neck and they've got these like much more sort of rounded faces this little guy down here is a house mouse though um, but yeah if you see any of these sorts of animals on your camera traps, let me know. Um, so over the years, we've done a bunch of different survey efforts across the Otway. So starting out in Anglesey in 2017, Delp, Gippsland, um, hired me to do some survey work and incorporated cameras around Anglesey. Obviously didn't find any New Hollands. In 2018, um, Museums Vic and um, Parks Vic uh, ran a bioscan and Sakib Kazi, who now works for Zuzvik, um, did all of these camera trap sites. So all, sorry, all the Great Triangles are camera trap locations. Pink dots are the New Holland records. The purple dots are the Smoky records, historic, not new. Um, and yeah, so Sakib did all of these in 2018, 2019. I did some targeted surveys around Holy Water Track where there was a suspicious, a suspicious hair detected in a fox scab. Um, but nothing came up there and then um, targeted some really nice um, potential uh, New Holland mouse habitat out in the Carlisle areas and yeah absolutely spectacular habitat should should be able to host New Holland mice but they're not there um, or if they are we just haven't found them yet um, and then in at the start of this year I did some targeted surveys down around Cape Otway um, looking for smoky mice and also with all these camera sets the CEC has helped out massively. Um, one of the main things from this data which uh, people have spoken about a bit today is that the difference in abundance and diversity of like the small threatened mammals that you're getting between Anglesey and Carlisle is incredible like once when I went out there and did camera surveys in the Carlisle looking through those cameras was like nothing I'd ever experienced before just like the incredible abundance of like yeah so many threatened species was amazing so our next rodent for the Otways and the final one for today is the Tuarana or the broad tooth rat so 
This is their Victorian distribution. Again, the dark grey circles are older than 20 years and the blue ones are from the last 20 years. So these guys um, still have some really good strongholds in the Alps, um, but they've undergone some pretty significant declines at lower elevations. Um, and some work by Stella Shipway in 2014-15 found that they had been lost from about 50% of their sites um, compared to pre-1990 records. Um, so these guys are expected to do really badly under climate change. They eat grass and sedges and not much else. And so they're really susceptible to fire and really susceptible to drought and um, yeah, warming temperatures. So um, yeah, they've been struggling. Um, and in the Otways, um, they've had a relatively, like relatively broadly distributed, but very patchy. Um, so found from Port Campbell all the way to about Big Hill. Um, but these guys are almost impossible to get in Elliot traps. Like a trap success for these is ridiculously low. Like it's basically pure luck if you manage to convince one to get into an Elliot trap. And they're also relatively hard to um, identify on camera trap images because they can simultaneously look like bush rats and swamp rats. And it's, yeah, just a bit of a muddy area. Um, but the way that we can quite easily survey for them is with their scats. So because these guys just eat grasses and sedges, um, they have to eat a lot of them and they poop a lot. So like, you know, 200 or so pellets a day. Um, and their scat is really, really distinct. So i um, going to get a bit weird for a second, but like when you catch bush rats and their scat is just like, it stinks and it smooshes everywhere and it's like just uh, gross. Whereas with these guys, their scat is like fibrous and it doesn't smell bad. It smells like mown grass um, and it's like, it can be quite green, it can dry and to like the sort of hay colored um, little pellets. And it's just really, really distinct and they leave it everywhere. Um, so it's a really useful survey tool for them. So um, if you guys are out anywhere and you happen to see little tunnels like this, so the species also creates these little tunnels and they maintain them meticulously. So you can come out one day, um, do a little scat survey, see all their tunnels, come out the next morning and you can see where they've like expanded their tunnels on like the grass that they've like snipped down to like maintain like these beautiful little runways for themselves. Um, so if you guys see any tunnels like that, um, you can just go and have like a look around, see if you can find any scats, take some photos, send them to me. Um, and I'm happy to help confirm any broadtooth rat scat IDs. Or if you're feeling brave, you can pick them up and squeeze them and uh, see if they feel spongy or yeah. Um, we were going to do some surveys across the Otways for broadtooth rat scat um, in July, but got cancelled due to lockdown five and it's still been delayed because um, we're still here in lockdown. But um, watch this space. We'll do lots of surveys over the next 12 months and hopefully I'll be able to tell you a bit more about how broadtooths are doing in the Otways um, at this forum next year. Um, the other thing that we're doing with broadtooth rats is um, Zuzvik now has a detection dog team. So we're training up um, detection dogs to be able to um, find their scats and eventually to be able to find live broadtooth rats. So um, this is Moss and he is now an expert in broadtooth rat scat detection. Um, and you can take him out to a site, let him have a sniff around and he um, is able to pick up on the scats and in areas even where you've got like quite low density. So it's hard for humans to find the scats. Um, and we're looking to use him and other dogs for things like post fire responses for species where um, you can go into a burnt landscape, use the dogs to find where species are hiding and then collect those animals if the chances of persisting in the landscape are incredibly low and we can take them into captivity until the landscape recovers. Um, or yeah, whatever's appropriate at the time. Also hoping to train some, a dog to look for smoky mouse burrows um, because that will really help to um, help us to figure out how the species is using the landscape and honing on like 
uh, core population areas and that sort of stuff. Um, and the dogs are also currently working on learning how to find bauble frogs and tea tree fingers, which is like a kind of fungus. Um, so yeah, that's all from me. Thanks. Thanks, <clears throat> thanks, Phoebe. Um, got a couple of questions for you. Um, would or could a reintroduction of Procure be considered for the Carl Heath area? It's a good question. Um, it's something that we've thought about a lot with the Wild Outways um, Initiative Rewilding Project. Um, and it's really hard because they're quite susceptible to cats and foxes. So, um, in the longer term, maybe if we have a really solid captive breeding program and a lot of animals to work to work with and establish um, a new population, but it would be incredibly expensive to do one uh, anytime in the near future because we would need to use predator-proof fencing to actually allow a population to establish. Um, so maybe, but in the distant future, if we had a lot of mice to play with, yeah. Thanks for that. And um, another question is, do you think the 1988 uh, Black Friday fires were a big impact or a big factor in the loss of species around the Anglesey Heath? I think it was the 83 fires um, have been attributed to the loss of some populations of the Pukela. Um, so Barbara Wilson um, has done some work on that and there were sites where the species was detected pre-fire um, and because it was such a large part of the landscape burn, there was nowhere for animals to then recolonize from. And yeah, it definitely seems to have contributed to that decline. Um, and I've got a quick one around BTRs. So often people talk about tussock grass as being what their preferred habitat in terms of forming their, their tunnels, but they seem to look, don't, they don't mind a mix of, of exotic pasture grasses in that as well. Is that something that you've noticed or? Yeah. So. Out in the Central Highlands, we get them a lot in fire breaks um, and areas where you've got, yeah, that sort of pasture grasses growing. They'll eat most, they seem to eat most kinds of grasses and sedges. And as long as they've got some, like, it's good to have those tusky grasses so they've got the structure to nest in and also some protection from predation and that sort of thing. But yeah, they, they'll eat like roadside verges and yeah. Awesome. Thank you. I think you're off the hook too, Phoebe. Um, thanks very much for your presentation. Thanks.